This podcast contains adult themes and graphic violence. Listener discretion is advised. A commercial-free version of this podcast is available on Patreon for $1 per month. Patreon.com forward slash Beyond Contempt Podcast. I'm Renee, and this is Beyond Contempt True Crime. I wanted to cover a case from Tennessee, given my impending move from Wisconsin to the volunteer state. This case was complex. It had shades of gray, with rare judicial rulings, and the defendant was known as the Black Widow in our community. This case is about as interesting as you can ask for. You're listening to Episode 43, Raynella Dossett Leith. Raynella Bernadine Large was born in the mountains of East Tennessee, on October 25, 1948. Her family lived in a small city called Oak Ridge, which was not too far away from Knoxville. Education was important to the large family. Raynella's mom, Annie Irene, was a teacher and often volunteered in the school system. Her father, Dewey Ernest, was in the Army during World War II. When he returned home, he completed a master's degree in chemistry and physics then took a job working at the Institute of Nuclear Studies. Rinella graduated from Oak Ridge High School in 1966. Following in the footsteps of her parents, Rinella went to college for nursing. That was where she met a man named Ed Dossett. After graduation, Rinella took a job in her field, and Ed attended law school. The couple married in 1970. Even though Ed was career-driven, he was still a farmer at heart. They lived on his 166-acre farm, which was just outside of Knoxville. Rinella worked her way up the ladder and became the director of nursing at Park West Medical Center. Ed and Rinella had three kids. After their third child, she scaled back her hours at work to take care of the children. In 1982, Ed ran for DA and successfully became the Knox County District Attorney General. Rainella was instrumental in his political career and also championed her husband's legal abilities to their community. In 1991, 43-year-old Ed Dossett was diagnosed with colon cancer, which had metastasized and was terminal. He tried to hide his illness for as long as he could, but there came a point when he needed care. Ed chose not to spend time in the hospital. He loved his farm, and he wanted to spend the time he had left at home. When he deteriorated, instead of bringing in a hospice nurse, Rinella took care of him since she was appropriately skilled. On July 9, 1992, Rinella walked out to the corral to check on Ed. He was lying on the ground, so Rinella called an ambulance out to the farm. She told the dispatcher that Ed wanted to feed his cattle, so she helped him out to the barn. When she went back to check on him, he was on the ground. Ed passed away as it appeared he was trampled by cattle. This was unexpected, as Ed was an experienced farmer and fed cattle all his life, but he was also very sick and weak with cancer. Ed Dossett and David Leith had been friends since their youth. David was a barber by profession, but often helped Ed take care of his farm, since David also had land next to the Dossetts. Within six months of Ed's passing, David Leith and Rinella were married in January 1993. People who knew the couple thought that the relationship wasn't balanced. Rinella was the person who ran the show. And when they went out to dinner, she would even order for him. In December 1994, Rinella's 15-year-old daughter had a learner's driving permit and was behind the wheel of their car. Rinella was sitting in the passenger seat when they got into a car accident which killed her 11-year-old son, Ed Jr., who was also in the car. He was buried next to his father on their family farm. In 1995, Rinella found out that her first husband, Ed, had an affair with Kay Walker, a woman who was also a prosecutor and worked in the same DA's office. The affair produced a son who was seven years old. Kay Walker was in the process of splitting from her 38-year-old husband, Steve Walker. 
She told him that their son's father was Ed Dossett, so Steve was the one who pushed for the divorce. Steve visited Rainella at her farm, and the meeting caused a serious incident. Two different stories emerged. Steve said the visit supposedly related to papers over the seven-year-old child Ed fathered. Rainella said Steve was snooping around her farm. According to Steve, Rainella opened fire on him. According to Rainella, she shot rounds into the ground to scare him off her property. Steve said he ran and jumped over a fence as she pulled the trigger of the gun until it was out of ammo. While escaping, he tripped and found himself on the ground. Rainella caught up to Steve and was looking down the barrel of her gun at him. He pleaded with Rainella that if she killed him, then he wouldn't be able to raise his kids and she wouldn't be able to raise hers. She pulled the trigger one last time. But since the gun was empty, Steve's life was spared. He escaped and immediately called the police. They charged Rainella with attempted murder, but she accepted a plea deal and agreed to the charge of aggravated assault. She was sentenced to six years of probation with no jail time and 100 hours of community service. Rainella's criminal record was expunged at the end of probation. Some folks speculated that the jury was sympathetic to Rainella, since she recently lost her husband and son in a short amount of time. The motivation for her crime wasn't clear, but in Steve Walker's statement to police, he said Rainella told him that she would kill him and his soon-to-be ex-wife. She would raise their child herself. In 1996, the drama in Rainella's life continued and she asked her husband David to cut his 33-year-old daughter, Cindy, out of his will. The couple went to a lawyer and had new wills created. If they died, the other spouse would get all the assets. In 2000, David was in his mid-50s and retired from his job. His daughter, Cindy, took over his portion of the barbershop. Dave's retirement was forced by his health, as he was reportedly struggling with memory issues and had early signs of dementia. On March 13, 2003, before 11.30 a.m., Rainella walked into their bedroom and found that her husband, 57-year-old David Leith, had passed away. When she called 911, Rainella said that her husband shot himself. You need 911. Help me! Help me! Ma'am, where are you? Please help ma'am, me! Ma'am, what's going on? Ma'am! My, my husband shot himself! Hurry! Okay, where is your husband? Where Hurry! Is your... He's in the bed! Ma'am, I need you to calm down so I can get some help to you, okay? Ma'am. When officers arrived, the front door was open, and Rainella was laying face down in her yard. She was quiet and still. An officer had to nudge her to get her attention. Then Rainella started sobbing to the point of breathlessness. They helped her to her feet, and then she began yelling and crying hysterically. Law enforcement felt her actions and emotional displays were authentic at that point in time. The detective touched the hood of Rainella's car, and it was lukewarm. He figured that the car might have been driven in the past several hours, even though she said she just arrived home. The police found a 38 caliber Colt revolver next to David's left hand and three shots had been discharged from the weapon. One bullet was lodged in the bedroom wall. Another one had penetrated the bed, and then there was a bullet in David's forehead. There were no fingerprints found on the gun. The gun did not have the stereotypical blood spatter or blowback that typically happens when someone shoots themselves at close range. There were no signs of a struggle in the bedroom. The detective felt that the blood spatter patterns on the wall made little sense based on where David's body was laying. Gunpowder around the bullet hole in the bed was not disturbed. They felt that the sheets were tucked in around David before the shot was fired into the mattress. There was a TV tray next to the bed with a bowl of oatmeal on it. There was no splatter found on the food tray, but splatter was found underneath the tray. Authorities believe that the tray was placed there after the shooting. Rainella told detectives that David had some medical and mental health issues. He suffered from depression because his mother was terminally ill, 
and he had early signs of dementia himself. There was an appointment calendar with several entries that were made by Renella from January through March 2003. Some of the entries said, Hateful, controlling, paranoid, made her cry. David paranoid, bad argument. David hateful, I'm tired of it. A few days before David's death, the entries on March 8th read, Slurred speech, hateful, stayed in bed all day. David's daughter told the police that David and Raynella got into an argument about feeding the cows, and Raynella told David that she was going to teach him an effing thing. David and Renella's neighbor told police that he never witnessed an argument on that day or any other day. After the autopsy, the medical examiner ruled David Leith's death a homicide. Renella cremated David the day after he passed away. Some of David's friends said that he wanted to be buried and not cremated. He had pre-purchased a plot of land that was next to his parents. The three gunshots were the driver that caused police to believe that this was a homicide case. However, there was not any strong evidence linking Rainella to David's death. The DA, Randy Nichols, had to recuse himself from the entire investigation, as he was close friends with Rainella and Ed, since he took Ed's position after he passed away. Another prosecutor was brought in, but not much went on with the case, and Rainella continued living at the farm. On March 3, 2006, David Leith's daughter filed a civil suit against Rainella. Even though Rainella convinced David to cut her out of his will, Cynthia was not seeking financial gain. She wanted to keep the family farm property that David had passed on to Rainella. Cynthia believed that it should have stayed with the Leith family, and she thought a civil suit might also help spark a criminal trial. Her lawsuit accused Rainella of either killing her father or hiring someone to kill her father, and therefore Rainella should be excluded from inheriting David Lee's property. Rainella was not a passive person and launched a counterattack. In her lawsuit, she said it was Cynthia who killed David. The lawsuit stirred new life into the investigation, and a few months later, David Leith's case was brought to the grand jury, and Rainella was charged with first-degree murder. She was released on $5,000 bond, and the low-dollar amount might have been a result of her strong ties to the DA's office. Now that Rainella was finally facing a murder trial, authorities wanted to look into the suspicious circumstances that surrounded the death of her first husband, Ed Dossett. We're going to take a quick break to hear from our sponsor. Thank you to Best Fiends for sponsoring this episode of Beyond Contempt True Crime. The summer looks like it's going to be super lit. Music festivals, baseball games, barbecues, beach parties. I can't wait to have some fun. Another great way to sustain that feel-good, white-claw summer party vibe is to download the puzzle game Best Fiends. Podcast listeners, let me tell you about this puzzle app. Best Fiends is endless fun, with thousands of levels to play and countless cute characters to collect. The challenging levels will keep you sharp and will help you maintain your A-game, especially if your summer plans are to party like it's 1999. Best Fiends is a fantastic game to play when I need to take a break from watching true crime shows on Netflix, like The Serpent, which, by the way, was really good. Well, up until the end, it dragged a little. More importantly... I know that you all enjoy this game. So download Best Fiends, free on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. Now, back to the show. In December 2007, they filed three different petitions to exhume Ed's body. The prosecution argued that both Ed and David died under suspicious circumstances and had an excess of drugs in their systems. Rinella's defense team fought the exhumation and said that it amounted to disrespect of the Dossett family. It was also an abuse of a corpse. The judge shot all the petitions down. There was a new medical examiner who had no ties to Rinella or Ed and re-examined Ed Dossett's autopsy report. Ed had two times the amount of morphine in his system 
that someone with cancer should have. And in the medical examiner's opinion, most humans could not walk or function with that much morphine in their body. The medical examiner thought Ed had an implanted pain pump that delivered the morphine, but it was not detected during the original autopsy. Dr. Randall Pedigo was the original medical examiner and decided the cattle trampling caused Ed's death prior to even getting the toxicology report back. The new medical examiner said the damage from the cattle was non-fatal and superficial. The original medical examiner was a friend of the Dossett family and knew that Ed's life insurance had an additional payout if he ruled the death an accident. This doubled the payout that Rainella would receive. She was paid $1 million, but was responsible with the money and started education funds for their children. Dr. Randall Pedigo knew the community speculated that the accidental death might have been Ed Dossett's very own idea. He felt pressure from the DA's office to rule Ed's death accidental. He found evidence of traumatic injury from the cattle, and he ruled the death an accident. Information came out that demonstrated Dr. Randall Pedigo had compromised ethics. He lost his medical license in 1995 after being convicted of drugging and molesting children. Finally, in August 2008, Rainella was charged with murdering her first husband, Ed Dossett, by overdosing him with morphine. In March 2009, Rainella Dossett Leith went to trial for the murder of David Leith. The jury could not agree on a verdict, and the judge declared a mistrial on March 12, 2009. Rainella's second trial started on January 19, 2010. The prosecution was not allowed to bring up the suspicious circumstances surrounding Ed Dossett's death. They felt Rainella had plied David Leith with drugs the night before his death and shot him in the morning after her daughter set off for school. She staged David's suicide and made sure she was seen by a variety of people in the community to ensure an airtight alibi. The prosecution also believed that David had no evidence of memory issues, as was claimed. They looked at slides of his brain, which were free of evidence of dementia. His daughter, Cynthia, also said that he did not have dementia. The defense team argued David killed himself because he was depressed, since his mother was not doing well and he was struggling with memory health. During the trial, David was described as fun-loving, laid-back, and carefree, which was the opposite of the items written on his medical appointment calendar like hateful or controlling. His friends testified that he did not have any mental or physical health issues. But it was also well known that David Leith was a very private person and didn't really share personal information. The chief medical examiner testified about the autopsy. She cannot pinpoint a time of death. It can only say that David died after 6 a.m. on the day he was found deceased. She also noted that David appeared well-groomed and seemed to be an individual who took care of himself. The doctor was likely implying that people with memory issues or dementia would not upkeep their grooming habits. There was a widespread area of gunpowder tattooing on David's head, which suggested there were several inches between the wound and the barrel of the revolver. The examiner estimated the gun was fired at 12 inches away from the victim. She explained that she didn't see forehead wounds with suicide cases, and this outcome would be extremely rare. The bullet that entered David's head immediately severed his brainstem. This pointed to the fact that he could not have pulled the trigger after that. The examiner looked at David's brain, and there was no apparent state of disease. David tested negative for alcohol, but Demerol, Sinequan, and Phenergan were found in his bloodstream. He did not have a prescription for these drugs, and none of the drugs were found at the farmhouse. Demerol is often used to control pain during surgery. An analog of Demerol is norpethidine, which was also found in David's bloodstream, and is seen with chronic users of Demerol. Sinequan is a sedative and antidepressant. There were borderline toxic levels found. The three drugs taken in combination were not safe, and were typically not prescribed together. It was not enough to render him incapacitated, but it may have impaired him enough where he could not get out of bed that day. 
and certainly he would not be able to defend himself. Another forensic scientist and blood spatter expert testified that day. She believed the first shot fired into the headboard because there was a few strands of David's hair that were caught in some of the bullet hole splinters. The scientist concluded this because the shot that was fired into the headboard created the splintering. After David was shot, he fell backward and down to the bed. Then his hair got caught in the splinters. She also believed David was in a raised position when he was shot, because that was what the blood spatter evidence was consistent with, along with the hair caught in the splinters. She agreed with the medical examiner that this was a homicide. There was no blood evidence found on Raynella's clothes on the day of David's death. However, her clothes dryer was running that day, and the assertion was that she washed all the evidence off her clothes. There were latex gloves found in the bathroom that were negative for gunshot residue and positive for Ranella's DNA. When gunshot residue testing was performed on David, it was positive. Ranella's test came back negative. The prosecution suggested that Ranella could have washed her hands or washed the latex glove to remove the gunshot residue. There were no fingerprints found on the gun, which made little sense in a suicide case. A ballistics expert testified that the shot fired into the mattress happened after the gunshots to the headboard and to David's forehead. The defense team laid out Rinella's alibi. Her youngest daughter left for high school at 8.20 a.m. Rinella and David watched some TV and turned on a program that featured speaker, author, and televangelist Joyce Meyer. She made David breakfast and put a load of clothes in the dryer. She then called David's daughter, Cynthia Wilkerson, at 9.50 a.m. and told her she was going to visit her grandma in the hospital. Hospital staff confirmed she was there. A guidance counselor who worked at the high school that Raynella's daughter attended testified that she called Raynella at 10.15 a.m. and asked her to bring some medicine. Raynella showed up at school at 11 a.m. She was in the guidance counselor's office for about 15 minutes. Rainella acted friendly, and nothing seemed unusual. On the way home, she stopped and talked to a neighbor who was parked in her driveway. At 11.23 a.m., Rainella placed the 911 call about David's suicide. The secretary at the high school also confirmed the time Rainella was there. There were other witnesses that testified for the defense and stated that David and Rainella had a seemingly healthy relationship. They often attended church as a couple. Rainella's oldest daughter testified she thought the world of David. He was her godfather. Her dad had been good friends with him, and her mom loved him. Her mom also took care of David and made all his meals. She never saw David prepare food for himself. Rainella's daughter tried to emphasize her mother's good character and said that she supported her family through hard times in life, including when her brother died in a car accident in 1994, when her mom was diagnosed with breast cancer, and when she subsequently underwent a double mastectomy in February 1999. She saw her mom on the day David passed away, and Rainella was shaking, upset, and emotional. She described her mother as being near catatonic. The jury deliberated for two days and arrived at a verdict on January 25, 2010. They convicted Rainella Dosset Leith of the first-degree murder of David Leith. She was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole. Since the verdict went the prosecutor's way, they decided not to pursue a murder charge for her first husband, Ed Dossett. Raynell's representation filed a motion for a new trial, and she was denied on January 28, 2011. In 2013, she appealed her conviction, and that was denied. Raynell was able to get a new legal team, and they filed a petition for post-conviction relief in July 2015. Some of the primary arguments of the petition were that David Leith had medical records that showed he had been medically diagnosed with dementia in 2002, but they had not been introduced at trial. His condition was declining despite treatment. In his medical records, right before his death, his physician wrote he had mood changes, failing memory, and frustration. There were also conflicting reports of law enforcement handling the murder weapon prior to the crime scene technician's arrival. The defense hired their own medical examiner, who said the drugs found in David Leith's system 
were within therapeutic range, and he was not incapacitated by the drugs when he passed away. Judge Richard Baumgartner, who had presided over Reynala's murder trial, had been taking painkillers and had appeared disoriented during the trial. He was the judge who denied Reynala a new trial, even when he knew the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation was interrogating him for using drugs. Judge Baumgartner denied Reynala a new trial on January 28, 2011, and then stepped down from the bench. He was convicted for using OxyContin from December 30, 2009 to January 25, 2010, during Reynala's second murder trial. The judge was being prescribed Oxy by a physician, but he was also getting the painkillers from drug dealers and from people who worked at the courthouse. The judge struggled with alcohol and opiates for years prior to the trial. He was sentenced to federal prison for six months. In May 2016, Judge Paul Summers tossed Reynella's conviction and awarded her a new trial because she did not receive a fair trial with a judge who was on drugs. She was released on bond. Reynella Dossett Leith's third murder trial began in May 2017. The same arguments from the prior trials were rehashed, and on May 10, 2017, both sides finished presenting evidence. But Judge Summers stopped the trial in a rare decision before it even went to the jury. He found that the prosecution didn't have sufficient evidence for a conviction. They proved David didn't kill himself, but that was it. The state could not conclude what time David Leith was killed. Rainella had an alibi, and there was no evidence proving she was home when he was killed. There was no physical evidence tying her to the crime. 68-year-old Rainella Dossett Leith was acquitted of all murder charges. Cynthia Wilkerson, David's daughter, was cutting hair in her father's barber station. Rainella dropped off a package that she left with David's former business partner and fellow barber. She didn't tell him what was in the package, only that it was for Cynthia. It was her father's ashes, which sat on a shelf in the barber shop until he was buried in Oak Ridge Memorial Gardens, several years after his death. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Beyond Contempt. Please visit beyondcontemptpodcast.com for the links to the sources and music used in this episode. Research, writing, editing, audio production, and sound design were performed by me, Renee. Thank you to new patrons, Colleen W. and Natasha Z. I appreciate you supporting the show. If you like the show, please leave me a positive review on Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much, everyone.